Hello everybody, what's up? In this video, I'm going to explain a really good problem on code share. The difficulty level of this problem is of beginner level, but it is not at all that easy. So without wasting for a moment, let's dive into the problem. All right, so it's really easy to understand this problem. You are given a three cross three matrix having digits one to nine in the puzzle state, and you have to achieve this solution state. But how you are going to do that, let me show you. In order to solve this puzzle, you can swipe two numbers, but you can only swap those two numbers whose sum is equal to a prime number. For example, seven plus four, that is 11. So we are good to go in swapping these numbers. Now seven plus six, that is 13, which is again a prime number. So we can swap them. Similarly, we have to keep on swapping these numbers whose sum is a prime number in order to achieve the solution state in the minimum possible steps as possible. Now I would like to show you the input and output format. Here you can see you will be given n number of test cases and equal number of puzzles in the form of a matrix. And for each test case, you have to print a single line containing the shortest number of steps needed to solve the corresponding puzzle. If there is no way to reach the final state, you can print minus one. So how are we going to solve this problem? Let's do some brainstorming. Okay, so from the question we know that we can only swap two numbers only if their sum is a prime number. We also know that the maximum prime number possible in this grid is 9 plus 8 that is 17. So there is absolutely no need to compute prime numbers because we already know all the prime number possibles, right? The second thing that comes to my mind that if you can go from the solved state to the puzzle state by swapping two numbers whose sum is a prime number, then you can also go from the puzzle state to the solved state. So you can pause the video here. By using these hints, you can try to bring out some solutions to this problem because in the next section, we are going to discuss about the algorithm. Okay, so the algorithm to this problem is pretty straightforward. Now, first of all, you have to pre-calculate all the possible puzzles and store them in a data structure. It can be any data structure depending upon what programming language you are using. Secondly, along with all the possible combinations, you have to save the number of steps required to achieve that state. So just for the sake of example, I'm using here only four digits, one, two, three, and four. But in actual programming, you will be using nine digits as given in the question. If you are able to do these two things, believe me, the problem is solved. But the question arises how you are going to generate all these possible puzzles. And the answer to this question lies in an algorithm that is known as breadth first search. If you don't know about breadth first search algorithm, it is highly recommend that you first understand what a BFS is. But just in case if you don't know, I would like to give you an example that how we are going to use the breadth first search concept in order to generate all these possible puzzles. So in the concept of breadth first search, we have a queue of uh, all the unevaluated uh, combinations and we have an array in which we are going to store all the possible combinations, that is all the nodes available. So in the first step, we have to dequeue or pop out the front element of the queue and start processing it. Then swap only those numbers whose sum is a prime number, that is one and two. After you have found a valid combination, put that in the queue and all the valid combinations. Again, repeat this thing and swap those two numbers whose sum is a prime number, that is three and two, that is five, which is a prime number. Now put this, put this element in the queue and all the valid combinations. Similarly, for other possible combinations from this evaluated node, all this process is going. Once uh, the processing of uh, one element is done entirely, you have to pop out again the second element from the queue and start processing it in the similar way as we did before. Once you have found all the possible combinations, you also need to store the level of this tree. This label is nothing but the number of steps required to achieve the initial state, that is the solve state, from the puzzle state, right? Using this algorithm, you can try yourself to solve this problem, but if not, then let me directly give you the solution now. Once you have all the possible combinations of the puzzle and also the number of steps required to achieve that state, you just need to accept the input and search in all these possible combinations. If you found it, then just print the label. Otherwise, print minus one. It is as simple as that. Now, let me show you the code for your reference. First of all, I define the possible prime numbers as already discussed. 
Now, secondly, I defined all the swappable nodes because if it is a three cross three matrix and we have to swap two numbers, then we can only swap two adjacent numbers. That is zero and one, zero or three. And uh, therefore, all these uh, 12 coordinates are actually swappable nodes, right? Now, third thing, these are the possible grids, which is all the valid combinations of a puzzle. This is a cube that we are going to use in the breadth first search concept. Now, in this loop, I'm generating all the possible combinations of the puzzle by using the breadth first search concept as already discussed in the video. And in this last loop, I'm just taking the input and checking if that input matrix exists in our possible grids. If it is, then I'm just printing the number of steps required to uh, achieve that state. Otherwise, I'm just printing minus one. So it's pretty simple. And with this, we have reached the end of this video. Please let me know what you think about this video in the comment section below. And thank you so much for watching. Have a nice day.